Storm Basketball, presented by Swedish, the official health care provider of the Seattle Storm. Health for good. Supported in part by Carter Subaru. Safety focused, community connected, in Shoreline Ballard and 24-7 at cartersubaru.com. And by BECU, the official credit union of the Seattle Storm. All right, joined by Jewel Lloyd, now in her seventh year, the first overall draft pick by the Seattle Storm and uh, playing the best basketball of her career. And Jewel, I start with the three-point shot. You have looked so good and so comfortable, and you're averaging a career high in makes and percentage from deep. Uh, just tell me about working on that game, and that's such a big part of it now. Yeah, I, you know, in the offseason, I spent a lot of time just, you know, making sure I was consistent in all aspects of my game and, you know, being able to knock down the three opens up a lot for me because I'm not just a shooter. I'm able to get to the basket as well, but um, it puts a little more pressure on the defense when I'm able to hit some outside shots. So, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to stay in a nice rhythm and a flow, um, you know, and just stay patient out there. And, and, you know, it makes it easy when you're playing with great players that find you in rhythm and tell you to keep shooting. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always nice when they say keep shooting. Uh, Dan Hughes, before he stepped down, said that you were playing the best basketball of your career, not only offensively, but on the defensive end of the floor. And you're averaging two steals a game. And this year, you're forced to check some of the top scorers with, with no Alicia Clark in there. Tell me about that defensive intensity and the energy to play as many minutes as you are and bring it on both ends. You know, it's it's fun. You know, that's how you, I grew up playing is playing both ends of the floor. Um, you know, when you're trying to play on the park, you can't be a liability on defense or you don't get to play. So um, having that mindset coming into the game, knowing, you know, I'm going to get their best player every night. And, you know, for us, it's not just me. It's a team effort, too. So I make a lot of mistakes, but luckily my teammates help me out. But um, it's just a different mindset to make sure that I'm ready. And my job is to, to make people take tough shots, um, be active. And that's when, I'm, that's when I'm at my best. And so um, I try to do that on both sides of the floor. And speaking of Dan Hughes, him stepping down, Noel Quinn, a player you won a championship with in 2018, is now the big boss in charge. And uh, talking to her, she's really excited for the opportunity, and everyone says she's ready. What's it been like to transition from Dan to Noel? I know the last year in the Wubble, that's what you guys were with her and Gary Kloppenberg. But what's it been like this season, Joel? No, he's great. Um, she brings a different kind of calmness, energy, um, confidence to us because I think that's what we see in her. Um, that's what she's always has given us. Um, so to see her having this opportunity is amazing. Um, I have a lot of respect for Noe. She's been a big part of my development and my growth. So um, I'm super excited for her. But I know the team is behind her. Excuse me, the team is behind her as well, and um, we're excited for this opportunity to to play. You know, for her with her, um, she brings a lot of great uh, energy to the to our team. Well, four or excuse me, five wins in a row. Keep it rolling. <laughs> That is the plan. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Appreciate your time. Have a good one. She has been magical so far. Time now for our road to recovery presented by our friends at Swedish. One injury for the Dallas Wings. Kayla Thornton still right knee contusion. Being bothered by that, she is questionable to play tonight. And the good news for Seattle, no injuries. Time now for our starting lineups presented by Joe TV for the Dallas Wings. Arike Gumbawale, oh, what a scorer she is. 22 points, four rebounds per game. Had 28 in the first matchup against Seattle. Mariah Jefferson, the 5'6 guard out of UConn, averaging four points per game. Marina Mabry lit Seattle up for 26 and eight, including six threes, a career best game for Marina Mabry the last time these two teams met. And then the bigs, number 35 is Charlie Collier, the 6'4 center out of Texas. And number 20, Isabel Harrison, the 6'3 forward in her fifth year out of Tennessee. You know the starting five for the Storm, the big three, Bird, Lloyd, and Brianna Stewart, as Elise mentioned in the outset, 58 combined for the three of them. And they have just been a model of consistency, especially the person you just talked to in Jewel Lloyd. I mean, she is just, you can just chalk her up for 20. Just put it in the books before the game starts. It's been amazing. Yeah, she is currently averaging a career high at 19.4 points per game, but she's top 10 in the league in both scoring and assists and steals her season so far. Uh, there's no question she's playing the best hoop of her career. Stephanie Talbot, Mercedes Russell rounding out the uh, starting five. And Seattle in the greens gets the tip. And we are underway on a Friday night in Everett. Here's Jewel with it against the Goomba Wally. That's going to be a great matchup to watch all night long. Talbot surveys, picks up her dribble, gets it over to Jewel on the right wing. 
Kick over to Talbot. Touch pass at the corner to Sue. Three on the shot clock for Mercedes Russell. Oh, good cut by Talbot. Buzzer beating shot. No. Off the front iron. Good execution. You get a shot right at the rim. Straight line drive for Talbot. One that she definitely wants uh, back because she needs to convert that one. Yeah, I can't argue with the execution for the first 23 seconds. It was just the last second. Here's Mabry with it. Got to watch her from behind the arc. Inside, turn around Harrison. Back iron, rebound Brianne. Stewie on the push. Beating inside Mercedes Russell. Shot blocked from behind. Collier gets a piece of that. And it's Dallas basketball. And already we see the tempo, Elise, that you portended just uh, about five minutes ago. These two teams love to run. Collier inside puts it up and in. Nice little jump hook for the number one overall pick. And quickly the other way, Mercedes Russell says, I can do that as well. We're tied at two. And a beautiful pass on the money from Sue Bird. Mercedes just had to take two steps, go up and in. When you're 6'6", you don't want to have to dribble and put the ball down. And she didn't make her with that beautiful feed. Jefferson kicked it out. She had a wide open layup, decided to kick it. But they get two anyway as a second effort is up and in. Brianna up top with it. Skips it to Sue. Dumping it down. Good post position for Talbot. This time it goes down for Stephanie, and she goes to the line for the end one. And that is a mismatch that Seattle would like to exploit. Talbot, very physical, is a bigger player. Then Marina Mabry, and right here, this is just old school post move. And a lean one way and then spin back, seal the defender, and drop step to the hoop. And the end one is up and in. Approaching the eight minute mark. Five, four, storm. Quick three on the way, and that's what Mabry likes to do. It does not take her long to release that basket. That was. Quick, and that was money. And she is a dead-eye shooter this year. 19 points per game. She has made at least two threes in every game this season, has Mabry. Sue with Jefferson on her. Nice pick and roll move by Russell. That's just well done. She's just learning that every year gets better at that. Uh, the defense late to rotate and did not get there in time to bother Mercedes Russell. Here's another Mabry three and another Mabry make. At least that is eight made threes in two games, really a game and three minutes against Seattle this year. Uh, you, you mentioned it, 26 points in the OT loss to Seattle in the first meeting, and that is a game they felt they let slip away. Brianna skips it over to Sue. Oh, that was a game Dallas had in the well. Until the final few seconds, Stewart inside, no good, rebound Collier. Seattle was down four with 17 seconds left to go in that game, and somehow found a way to get it to overtime and got the win in overtime. Had a brilliant runner by Jordan Canada to win that one, or to send it into overtime, rather. And Jordan with 14 points in that game, but different personnel for this matchup. Saptu Sabali out of Oregon, second year player. I was playing three on three for her native Germany, and she is back in the fold. So is Alicia Gray, who put up 23 points in her only game of the season, the opener versus LA and a Dallas win. So two new players for Dallas. And then Seattle gets Katie Lou Samuelson back, who I had some really bright moments and shot the ball well in her first two games with Seattle before taking off uh, to go over to Europe for three on three. And congratulations to that three on three squad. Absolutely. Katie Lou and Alicia playing together that qualifying for the Olympics in three on three basketball, first year event. Both free throws miss. Seattle dodges a bullet there. Entry pass to Talbot. Nice catch. Couldn't gather herself, though, to get the accurate shot up there. 10-7, Dallas with the lead, 6.42 left. Trying to add to it is Arike Akutmawale knocks it down. And that was deep and a quick trigger and no hesitation. Russell hands off Talbot. Diving in is Russell. Got good post position with a smaller player on her. They reverse it instead to Brianna, who misses the three. Defender had to choose between going to Stewie or Jewel. Stewie with a pass fake and then was wide open, just couldn't knock it down. Avery again. Can she make it three of three? No, off the mark. 
That one wasn't as much rhythm as the other two. And a nice swipe there by Sue, and we're coming the other way, three on two. Ooh, look at the handles by Brianna Stewart, feeding Mercedes Russell inside. Is there a big that is better running with the basketball than Brianna Stewart? She is a weapon because she will rebound, that time picking up the steal, and then she just takes it herself. And right. so if you have to take ball, point guards, you had a point guard on Brianna Stewart, and you've got mismatches everywhere. Stewie feeds Lloyd, who sticks it. Is that a two or a three? They're going to review it at the next dead ball. 13-12 right now is the score. Gumbawale, the big one-two, and gets by Brianna Stewart. Boy, the stars have come out tonight on a Friday night, that is for sure. Here's Talbot with it trying to answer. Look at the tempo of this game. 15-15, you got to love what you're seeing right now. Both teams exactly 54.5% at 6 of 11. First one to 100, it might be first one to 110. <laughs> yeah. I love the pace. Jefferson throws it up there, no good, back iron. Here comes Talbot. Talbot from 18, no good, gets her own rebound, no box out. Here's Sue with it for three. Oh, man, the lack of box out costs three points. And the three-point shooting for Seattle, Red Heart, Red Hot to start three of five. Nikki Johnson wants to take a timeout. Both teams scorching right now. We've only made it five and a half minutes. We've already got 33 points on the board, storm by three. Welcome back, Angel of the Winds Arena. Ever watching Dick Fane along with Elise Woodward. They are taking a look at that three by Jewel Lloyd, which did turn out to be a three. And you know, Elise, sometimes it's fun to have a matchup battle. Like one team's great defensively, another team's great offensively, or one team likes to slow it down, one team likes to speed it up. But I also like it when one team looks at the other and says, I can run better than you can. And the other team says, no, I can run better than you can. And that's what we have tonight. Well, that's a gift to all of us watching this game because <laughs> If you like to see points, you like to see tempo, pace, three-point shooting, both squads over 50%. And now Satu Sabali on the floor, the second overall pick from last year. First action of the year for her. Here's the drive shot blocked by Brianna Stewart, the long arm of the law right there. Here's Joel, Joel with it. Coming around a screen, another three ball, and an offensive foul. Are they going to get Mercedes on the illegal screen? I believe they are. Satu, you mentioned, playing in Germany in the three-on-three -three qualifier. Good to see her back on the WNBA hardwood. Here's a quick trigger, trigger shot by Ty Harris, who has been Hot, hot, hot. Career high in back-to-back -back games. 13 against Phoenix, and then 18 the last game against the Sparks. She is getting some confidence. Oh, Brianna, great catch inside. Can't finish, but boy, that was a, that was a difficult catch there. Sue sent that into traffic in the perfect location, and Brianna had to go up and get it. And a nice job of sticking those fingers out, grabbing it, and then not traveling. Just taking a one foot, getting up, and taking the contact ahead of the foul line. Coming out of that timeout, Seattle was on 11-2 run, and they assisted on all seven of their first seven field goals made, which is something that Seattle has been outstanding in. They were number one in the WNBA last year in it, and they're right about the same pace this year. They're at 68% right now. Last year, they were at 69% of field goals that were assisted. That just shows you you are sharing the ball and playing team basketball. Here's Mabry again, the jump shot up and in, and she picks up where she left off the last time she played Seattle. She's got eight already on three of four. She's playing with so much confidence. And how about this ball rotation and splash from Stephanie Talbot. Sabali hands off to Mabry. They got the longer Brianna Stewart on this possession there, possibly on a switch. Stewart inside on defense, gets a piece of that one again. There's a lot of length in there with Russell and Brianna Stewart. And look at Jewel running the other way, getting the feed from Sue. And Brianna coasting in. Nobody got the trailer. The Deuce gives Seattle a four point lead. That is a fast break, just gorgeous. Not forcing it in Jewel and just running the floor with Stewie. And here's another rip and run out. Sue, the bounce pass to Talbot. 
Seattle pushes it out to six. When Seattle can get easy buckets in transition like that, they are a team that is unstoppable because they have such good execution in the half court. But those are about 99% field goal percentage on those kind of lanes. Sabali working on Mercedes Russell, the big one two in the lane, no good. Snatched down by Mercedes. She's just gobbling up rebounds right now. She's been doing it. Her rebound per minute has been absolutely fantastic. She's got a couple on the game thus far in eight minutes. 11 boards for her the other day. And she sneaks free and misses the layup. Oh my goodness, easiest shot she'll get all season. Sabley against Sue. And Alicia Gray back iron, long rebound out to Dallas. Mabry, don't give him a second chance because that's what'll happen. That's the second one of those we've seen, one for Seattle and one for Dallas. You talk about a candidate for most improved player. 10 points a game last year in the Wubble. She's averaging 19 a game so far this season. And she's just got that look in the eye. You give her any space, she's going to knock it down. Russell, a little crossover. Look at the handles in the lefty going to go to the lane. Beautiful. How about this ball movement by Seattle, Elise? This is what teamwork looks like right here from the Seattle Storm. Well, Sue Bird just taking the time. Looking up, finding Lloyd, who doesn't force it as the pass is a little off target and then hits Jewel. And then Stephanie Talbot getting out, beating the defense down the floor. And that's one thing this team does so well. They run their lanes, they get good spacing, and it's so hard on a defense to get any bodies in front when you've got three-point shooters all over the floor. You've got a passer like Sue Bird, and you have players willing to work hard and race down the floor to beat you. Russell knocks it down, and she's out to a very good start right now. How about eight points, two boards, an assist, and a block from Mercedes Russell in nine minutes? Katie Lou in the game for Seattle. Congratulations, as you mentioned before, helping Team USA qualify for the Olympics in three on three, and Sabley knocks down the three ball. That's a big hit for Sabley. Shot just 19% from three as a rookie. Brianna Stewart slips that screen and then slips to the floor, but she got it helped. That's going to go on a Goomba Wally. And a 15 foul will send Brianna Stewart to the free throw line. This kind of hits when you fall to the floor and it's awkward. They add up, they take a toll on your body with bruised on your knees or your elbow, or you can see Stewie kind of brushing herself off after hitting the floor. You definitely don't want to see your star going down on the floor too many times in a game. How about this? Stewie's got four, Lloyd's got three, and Bird has three. That's 10 from the big three. Russell and Talbot have 19. They are providing the scoring punch because so much focus defensively is on the big three. Here's Gray with it. Oh, Jewel gets her hands up. That's what you teach kids, but then she loses it. Falls to the floor giving up the layup. Great defensive play and then stumbles and loses the ball. Yeah, just unlucky that Jewel Lloyd couldn't hang on to that ball after taking the steal. Oh, the give, the go, the bucket. That's just gorgeous. I'm telling you, that's two first team all WNBA players right there. I know Jewel hasn't won one yet, but it's coming. Doomba Wale, 15 footer, no, snatched down by Canada with 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. 60 points on the board thus far. It's been a fun one, as we kind of figured it would be. The last one certainly was. Four second differential to Jewel. She's going to pull out Arike with four in the shot clock. One on one. Going to go right around her late help, and they foul her. Wow. Arike Agumbawale, she just got shook on that one pretty easily by Jewel Lloyd. A little bit surprised to see that. Really? Are you surprised that Jewel well, was able to shake her? I mean, Jewel can shake a lot of people, but <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about a slow defender here. I know she's a gorgeous move with her left, and then that's a big time collision underneath the hoop. Those hurt, and you saw Jewel was a little slow to, slow to get up. We saw Brianna on the ground a few moments ago. You want to go in, but you don't You don't want to see your stars sacrificing their body like that too many times. And that was a collision midair. Dangerous play. 
But I think if I'm a Goomba Walla, I'm playing Jewel to drive first. And if she hits a jumper with a hand in her face, so be it. Two seconds left in the first quarter, three on the way, off the mark, and we're off to the races here in Everett. 62 points on the board. Seattle's got 34 of them, giving them an eight-six-point lead. Hey, Storm fans, now's your chance to take cover with a brand new roof from State Roofing. Enter the Raise the Roof sweepstakes at storm.wmba.com slash state roofing. You'll have a chance to win $5,000 towards a new roof or gutters. You'll also have a chance at winning a basketball signed by Brianna Stewart or a brand new Storm jersey and hoodie of your choice. Once again, enter the State Roofing Raise the Roof sweepstakes at storm.wmba.com slash state roofing. There you go. How about Kenny Maine in the house tonight? The Northwest native just leaving ESPN. Had a great opportunity on my radio show to talk to him last week. He is just as entertaining as it gets. Smart humor is what he is. Yes, he is. Brilliant. Three ball in the way, no good, out of bounds. How about these first quarters by the Seattle Storm, Elise? They've scored 25 or more in the first quarter now in six of the eight games, including 27 in four of them, and now 34 in this one tonight. They have come out hot now. Second and third quarter, not so much. Been their two worst quarters of the year offensively, so we'll see if they can change that tonight. Three ball there makes it 34-31. Well, Seattle, after the first quarter, what are they on pace to do? 136 points. <laughs> That's what they're on pace to do. I think their offense came to play. 11 made field goals, 11 uh, assists. That wow. is beautiful basketball. Which gets them almost now for the season up to last year's pace, which they which led the league. 69% of all their field goals were assisted. They're just over 68% right now with that 11 at 11. So uh, just amazing job thus far by Seattle in that category. And now all five starters subbing out. Five subs coming in for Seattle, so they want to continue with that trend. Biff kicks it over to Samuelson, who might be a little bit rusty after a long plane ride, and this one's off the mark. Yeah, that one, I don't think she ever really set her feet or it slipped out because that one was well off, and she's a dead eye shooter. Yes, she is. Here at the top, see, you could see her tapping her chest saying, my bad, my bad. Wally, hounded by Canada. Sobley working on Ezzy goes to the rim, and Ezzy gets a body on her, so Satu Sobley will go to the free throw line for two. And so far, one of the keys, keep the wings off of the free throw line, and so far, 0 for 2 on the day by the wings. This is just the third and fourth attempt at the line of the day. And off the back iron. There's Katie Lou and the three-on-three -three team. The winner of the Big 12 International Three-on-Three -three Tournament. And that qualifies Team USA for the Olympics. And she obviously has a great chance to be on that team as well. The selections will be made a little bit later in the summer. Pretty cool that Alicia Gray and Katie Lou Samuelson yeah. competing with each other just a few days ago now. Candice Dupree takes the youngster to the rim. She says, I've, I've got a little acceleration left. I can get by you, kid. Here's a Goomba Wale with it. Guarded by Prince. Quick trigger three off the mark, tipped around. Candace Dupree, some energy here in the early going on both ends of the floor. Samuelson gets fouled by Sobley. The point guards just left Katie Lou there. <laughs> he got Prince and Canada running out the other way. And Katie Lou is like, whoa, I got to take this up against traffic. OK, I can handle that. Prince with it against the Wale. Put on the line, jump shot, back iron. Gets her own rebound and is fouled and will go to the free throw line. That is three non-box outs of shooters on long range jump shots and they've all turned into points. The first two turned into three pointers and assuming Epiphany makes at least one of them, this is gonna turn into points as well. It should be the easiest block out in the game off the shooter <laughs> because their hand is in the air. They're not actively looking to go anywhere. So you just have to come up and kind of give them a, you know, just make sure they're not going anywhere. 
Is that I mean, scouted? You see that on film and say, hey, this, this team doesn't box out shooter, so let's follow your shot. I mean, it can be. You definitely don't want to give up a fast break opportunity on the other end because you don't, you know, get back on a long miss. But if you can go get the ball like that, and Seattle's been able to do that three times in a row, yeah, follow your shot. That's now 11 points scored in this game simply off of non-shooter box outs, and nine of them by, or eight of them rather, by Seattle. Avery splits the double nicely. Gets ripped, though. Here comes Canada the other way. It is a green convoy. Who does she get it to? Ezzy, the trailer, laying up and in. Beautifully done. She hesitated just long enough to get Ezzy in position. Nearly stole that one. Three out of the way by Mabry, and it's answered. Here we go. I thought the Indy 500 was last week. Well, Jordan Canada, all the way at the other end, raced back to tip that, but it landed in the hands of Mabry. And, folks, she is red hot. Here's Ezzy with it, into traffic, lays it up and in off the glass as he sees the double team, goes right at it and scores. And a nice few possessions for Ezzy. She had that double-double game in game two against Las Vegas, and then she's been very quiet offensively. They love what her upside is with that length, just in her second year out of Australia. It was in the Wubble last year, kind of learning the way, but they love her potential as a young star coming from down under, and it's nice to see her get on the board back-to-back -back possessions. Eight points, Seattle lead. Uh oh Tiffany got beat on that one baseline, but the offensive rebound comes down into the hands of Collier, puts it up and in. She scored early and scores again here. She's got four points and four rebounds. Dupree, catch and shoot, no. Long bomb the other way. Caught by Allery, a little jump hook and in. And boy, you can't blink on this team. An eight point lead's nothing on Dallas. They can chop that in half like they did in about 20 seconds. Well, these two teams, the pace. There's not 10 seconds going off on a shot clock, and you feel like somebody wants to put it up. Canada, now to Prince. Both benches get a nice run, and the quality of play has still been very high. Ooh, got to be a foul there. Dallas said they got all ball. Maybe we can get a look at this and see if it was a good call or not. But the, rate, the way Dallas reacted, about three of them all saw ball. Jordan Canada was very aggressive. Yeah, she got her on the arm. Canada very aggressive when these two teams played the first time and was a big reason why Seattle was able to pull out that win. She had 14 points, got to the foul line four times, and had five assists. And her shot's been a little bit out of rhythm recently, and they'd love to get her going. Knocks the first one down. Big runner in the lane. One of the biggest shots of the season for Seattle. Ezzy with some nice minutes for the Storm. Five points in just three minutes of action. Takes a break, and back comes Brianna Stewart, your WNBA Western Conference Player of the Month. Jefferson with it. Now Mabry against Katie Lou. Eight on the shot clock for Mabry. Working on Dupree. Dupree doing a pretty nice job staying in front until the very end, and Mabry just slipped by her once she got into the paint. I'm telling you, Mabry now has 16 points. <laughs> She's going off. She averages 19, which is by far her career best. Katie Lou, this is her money shot right there. That's off the mark. She's missed one from each corner now. Mabry coming off a 26 point out against Seattle. So she scored 42 in three quarters, or excuse me, three halves of basketball against the Storm today. And up and in is there is Sabali there. And Noel Quinn wants to take a TO because back comes Dallas. 5.59 left to go in the first half. Seattle by two, 45 43. Back to Everett after this. Hey, fans of Storm and Denali Advanced Integration, proud to spotlight organizations supporting youth in our community. Tonight, the Bird's Nest features the youth from Boys and Girls Clubs of King County. For over 75 years, Boys and Girls Clubs of King County have been opening doors of opportunity and preparing young people 
for a great future. Dick Fane, Elise Woodward back with you in Everett. If it wasn't for that young lady right there, Storm would be kicking Dallas right now. But Mabry's got 16 points, including four of five from three-point range. No one else has more than eight for Dallas. Here's Katie Lou, 15, no. She's 0 for 3. Mabry with it, pull a pass at Gungawale. Oh, well, Mariah Jefferson gets by Brianna and scores. The penetration defense on both ends of the floor has not been good. Yeah, another straight line drive, just a simple up fake, and then she had a wide open lane to the bucket. So with it, Brianna rolling, can't get it to her. Grabs down, she's all right. <laughs> As we breathe heavy. Yeah, nice tip pass from Candace Dupree to Katie Lou who misses the three ball. And she's really struggling right now. But shooter's got to shoot, right? Yeah, absolutely. She's had some tough looks. Just needs one of those to go down, and she'll be back in a roll. Another straight line drive. The up fakes, I'm not sure why everybody's buying the up fakes, particularly from, I mean, Sabali can shoot, but. Well, I think you need to know against Sabali that she shot just 19% from deep last year. Now, she's a player that absolutely could shoot it in college, but went in the back of her mind. Yeah, you want to play her, give her the three-point sh shot. Don't give her a straight line drive. Dallas has the lead now. Brianna Stewart gets blocked. It's an 8-0 Dallas run. What a pass by Agumba Wale, but the layup is missed. But Arike is there. She does everything on that play. Makes the pass and then makes the shot. Dallas has stretched this out, their largest lead of the game, four. Up and down game. Sue's been quiet tonight. Not anymore. Knocks that one down. She's two of two from the field. Uh, it's hard to look up at the scoreboard to see 49 to 47, and there's yeah. four plus minutes left in the second. I mean, this pace has just been really fast. Sobley misses that one. Dupree snatches down the rebound, and a transition foul. Actually, probably a good one by Sobley because Seattle had three on two coming the other way, and two of them were Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart. So that was likely going to be a bucket, and now Seattle's going to have to earn it. Third on Sobley, though. Yeah, so one of those that uh, will take her off the floor. Three fouls in the first half. Uh, Brianna Stewart heading to the free throw line, and she has just been playing as well as anybody in the world to start this season. It has been fun to see her go. Western Conference Player of the Month, and two-time WNBA Finals MVP, and she is just still so young. No good there. Hey, fans, a celebration of LGBTQ plus pride presented by Deloitte. The WNBA will collaborate with Gilson and Fanatics on an exclusive line of Pride apparel, including Fanatics brand WNBA t-shirts. Thanks to Gleisen and Deloitte. All WNBA proceeds, proceeds rather, will benefit Gleisen and fans can purchase the shirts at wnbastore.nba.com. Travel foul violation there. Gives it back to Seattle. Get the lead back here with 3.47 left to go in the first half. So Talbot with it up top. Brianna cutting, a lot of body, and draws contact. When you make a hard cut like that, you're going to get the call. She really came to the ball tough. Movement without the basketball is so crucial for Brianna Stewart. The way that teams want to key on her, you can't double team someone before they get the basketball. It just makes it a very difficult to, part of the defense when she moves the way that she does. And that time, Harrison just getting caught up, bumped her unintentionally, but it was created by the energy and the hard cut. Stewie now five of seven from the stripe. This one would get her in double figures to join Talbot as the only Storm players with 10. Good balance scoring by Seattle. Talbot 11, Stewart 10, Russell 8, Lloyd and Bird, and uh, Ezzy 5 apiece. There's not been much balance from Dallas. Most of it's coming from their guard tandem of Mabry and Agumbawale. Another turnover. Here comes Seattle with it. 
3.20 left in the first half. Brianna pump fakes, drives the lane, gets fouled again. Brianna Stewart going to the free throw line. That has been a key of the Seattle coaching staff all year long. Keep the opposition off the line and get yourself there. And Brianna's doing a great job of that. These are going to be her ninth and tenth free throws of the first half. And as a team, this will be number 19 and 20. For free throw attempts, Dallas has just four, so a big discrepancy there. Seattle up two now with 51 points. Most points allowed by Seattle in half this year is 51 in a game against Vegas, so they might score the most and allow the most in a first half in this basketball game. Back iron there. Excited to see the rookie out of Finland, Awak Kuir, onto the floor now. Has been dunking since age 15. It's incredible. <laughs> and she is long. She's 19 years old. Well, that crossover dribble, step back oh. and hit it. My <laughs> goodness. You're not stopping that. I mean, that is just high-level shot making by Hagumbawale. Just a couple players in the world that can do that. Ball good by Brianna Stewart to answer there, and Seattle's back up two. Yeah, that was an answer because in a back and forth game, Agumba Wale hits that tough shot. Brianna Stewart coming right back with a three pointer of her own. Double high post runs look here, almost stolen away by Sue, and she was going to coast in. She may anyway. Here comes Sue on the turnover. Three on three. Flip pass Lloyd. Lloyd driving baseline. It was good defense for a while. And then the foul is called. That's going to go on Dungy. Well, the one thing Jewel Lloyd did is she got the defender on her hip. And once you do that, you're good to go. Seattle with a two point lead. Storm fans secure the best tickets and the lowest price for the rest of the season by purchasing the 10 ticket minimum flex package to secure your seats. Call 206 217 WNBA or visit stormbasketball.com. Dick Fain, Elise Woodward, it has been a fun one. It has been up and down. Both teams shooting over 50%. Both teams assisting at a high rate. Seattle assisting on 14 of 16 made field goals. And Dallas assisting on 13 of 21. Jewel makes it a three-point lead here. Well, I think an impressive thing for Seattle, nine different players have already scored in this game. And so the load, as always, has been heavy on Brianna Stewart, who's got 14 points to lead the way, but so many other contributors. Avery has it. Jewel Irish on Irish with Jewel Lloyd guarding her. Bounce pass in the paint. Number four on the shot clock. Driving a lot of contact on the far side. We're getting a blocking foul on Stephanie Talbot. She did not like the call, but Dungy drew the contact there. I think it's 13 foul on Seattle, so there's no free throws being shot. So right here, shot. who initiates the contact there is the question the official is looking at. Stephanie says, it wasn't me, and there was a little bit there of an extension on that arm, so yep. I think that one uh, definitely could have gone the other way. Just ask Stephanie, she'll tell That's me. right. And so will too. Sue. Sue is all over the official on that one. Avery gets enough room. This one's not going down, though. Boy, I thought that was deep in the well. well she's already made four. Now four of six from deep, and everyone has looked on target. Boyd, now to Bird on the shot clock. Stewie to Jewel Lloyd. Step back for the highest scoring half of the year. No good. Seattle needs two more points to tie the highest scoring half of the year at 58. They also have a 57 point half as well. Wally doesn't use the screen. Instead, step back, heel of the iron. Tipped around, back to Enrique. Thinks about it. Seattle scramble on deep. Tries to get back. Finally does. Turn around jump shot. No good. Dallas starting to cool off just a little bit down to 47%. They were just at 52 at the last break. Back to Russell. 
Just great player movement by Seattle all night long. Ooh, Aaron Pass knocked away by Agumboale. Enrique into the lane, gets to the window, scores, flexes on her, and will go to the free throw line. Wow. That's one where you just have to make a decision early, get out of the way, or try it. This one, you swipe at the ball, and that's going to be a three-point opportunity. She's too strong. Just ask her, look at that right there. Got the flex going, and she's right. I mean, she is too strong with the ball in her hands. Rarely gets it poked away on a fast-break situation like that. She's hitting the weights, there's no question about that. 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Brianna inside, double team. Turns, fires, ooh, in and out. But Brianna will go to the free throw line to try to get Seattle up four. Seattle's franchise record for most points in the first half is 61 back in 2007. So it would take a little something to get there. But their best halves this year against Minnesota on the 28th, they had 58. And on the 20th against Minnesota, they had 57. So both of their best halves of the year have both come against the Lynx. Well, that one popcorn and out. Stewie now just 7 of 11 from the free throw line. That one goes down. Love getting her there 12 times, though, that's for sure. Yeah, just because a couple of unlucky bounces like that one. It touched every part of the rim, but wouldn't go in. Wale, oh, we're going to get one on one goodness right here. Wale against Lloyd. Oh, she gives it up. Harrison is wide open. Misses the shot with two seconds left, and that will be the end of the first half of play. Will not be good if it goes, and it doesn't. Boy, it doesn't get a lot more fun than what we just saw in the last hour, that is for sure. Seattle leading 57 to 54. And we're joined now by the new head coach of the Seattle Storm, Noel Quinn. And uh, Noel, let's start with the offense. My goodness, I mean, anytime you can get 14 assists on 16 made baskets. Something right is going on. Absolutely. You know, our offense is predicated on ball movement, um, passing up good shots to get great shots, and that's what you're seeing today with our offense and our flow. Coach, you got nine different players in the scoring column, and you had good production from your bench. What was the real key to getting ha having so many people involved? Yeah, I think it starts on the defensive end. Um, these are tough matchups. We're not going. We have to contain them, limit them to one possession. Um, sorry, one shot. Rebound, finish possessions, and then get out to running. And when you see that, you see our pace picking up. You see us able to get easier buckets. Um, but it does start on the defensive end. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank Thanks. You appreciate it. Yep. That's Noel Quinn. Her team has got a three-point lead, 57-54, shooting 52% from the field, but they've given up nine threes in the first half. Got to cut that down if they want to get another win. Halftime is presented by Symmetra, the official life insurance partner of the Seattle Storm. And brought to you in part by Swedish, the official healthcare provider of the Seattle Storm. Health for good. And supported by Carter Subaru, safety focused, community connected. It's Shoreline, Ballard, and 24 7 at cartersubaru.com. Subaru and the Seattle Storm leading by three, 57 to 54. Both teams shooting well. Let's see how well as we take a look at the Symmetra stats. 52% for Seattle, 49% for Dallas. And then look at the three-point shooting, both at 50%. We've had 14 bombs already thrown in, nine of them by Dallas. And as you mentioned, Elise, I mean, that's been, that's really been, it's the Mabry bombs that's been keeping them in this game. Uh, she was outstanding in the first half. And boy, what a development for the Dallas Wings to have a player taking 19th overall. And now in her third season out of Notre Dame, remember her and, Enrique Gumbawale winning that national championship together at Notre Dame. And boy, she has just exploded onto the scene. 19 points per game is what she's averaging, but over six boards a game as well. So she's getting all kinds of things done. And she was a huge factor in the first half. Well, we've had seven ties and nine lead changes. The last time these two teams played, there were 14 ties and nine lead changes. What a game this was last week. Yeah, it was 
one that you will remember as Seattle kind of snatched a victory from Dallas late on the road. And boy, uh, the Dallas Wings have got a lot of talented players and they have been on display today. And then of course, adding Alicia Gray and Satu Sabali. And Seattle probably feels fortunate they were able to catch Dallas not at full strength a while ago, but today uh, they have been impressive. But uh, 36 points and 11 for Brianna Stewart. She was absolutely unguardable at points in that game. And Arike Gumbawali with those 28 points and seven boards, just not enough. Well, Seattle tonight has been beaten by Agumba Wally and Mabry again. Those two combined 12 of 18 for 31 combined points, whereas Stewie's had her. She's got her 15, mostly from the free throw line. Jewel Lloyd's been quiet, one of two from the field, seven points. So if you look at the big scores for Dallas, they're, they've already done their thing. Whereas two of the three big scores for Seattle haven't yet. So you got to figure Sue Bird's going to hit some clutch shots as she always does in the second half. Jewel Lloyd's going to take many more than two field goal attempts, I would imagine, in the second half as well. I think for Seattle, the good news for Jewel Lloyd, just two field goal attempts, but she was active in getting to the line. But they were able to get out and run. And the 16 fast break points, and that's why you see Stephanie Talbot has 11 points on the board. She hit a couple of threes, but that pace, she was able to find her spot or get some open looks. And that's what you need. You can't just rely on three players to fill up the scorebook every single game. Yeah. Dallas got 31 for Mabry and Agumba Wally. The rest of their starting five only with eight total points. With Harrison and Jefferson with two apiece. Charlie Collier has four. They did get eight off the bench from Sabali. The storm led by the 15 of Stewart and 11 of Talbot. Eight for Mercedes Russell. For Talbot and Russell, those are season highs already. Here's Mabry trying to start things off. Hot heel of the iron, no good. Sue comes down with the rebound. See who makes the defensive adjustments as we have another wide open three and Talbot adds to her season high. She's got 14. The defense had to suck into the paint to take away the cut from Brianna Stewart and that left Talbot wide open. Wale working on Jewel. Jump pass inside. Nice catch and finish right there. Brilliant play there. Isabel Harrison on the game thus far with six points, excuse me, four points and four rebounds on two of eight. Lloyd around a pick from Brianna, left to right. Picks up her dribble, bullet pass inside to Russell. Gets her shot blocked, but they're going to say a foul on Collier getting her on the head. What a read on that play. This was before when the defense goes with Brianna Stewart. One of the leaders, number two in the WBA in scoring, and then they leave Stephanie Talbot wide open, and she's now three for three from behind the line, and she's got 14. Russell knocks down the first. Mercedes has just really been solid. I mentioned her season high already with nine. She had her season high boards in the last game against Indiana. So playing her best basketball here this week. Yeah, 11 boards against the Fever, and that's really what she provides for this team. A big presence down low, defensively rebounding. And you see her sneak behind the defense for offensive opportunities as Ooh. well. Alters that shot, but Jefferson gets it to go anyway. She had to put an extra about foot of elevation on that shot to give it over, get it over Russell's hands. A pretty teardrop for Jefferson. Lloyd crossover, forces her way in, and that's the Jewel Lloyd of 2021, just stronger than she's ever been before. I think I've seen more body Jewel Lloyd this year making baskets than I've had in any other, other season. And what a matchup between her and Agumba Wale. We got a whistle and a foul. It's gonna go on Sue. First foul on Sue. First team foul on Seattle. Collier worked on by Russell. Now the switch. Somebody's got to be open because there's a lot of rotation out there and good ball movement. Give and go play, but look what I found, says Mabry, and she knocks it down. Running the other way was Talbot, and they say she last touched it. Turnover on Seattle. 
Yeah, one of the few times that Seattle trying to push tempo has turned the ball over. That time, just an unfortunate break. Talbot thought that Mabry was going to tip that one away and deflect it, but Mabry took her hand back at the last minute, so it was off Seattle. Only the fourth turnover on the Storm. This game has seen only nine turnovers thus far. Good move off the glass. Couldn't get it to go, though. Stewie with the rebound. Crossover into the lane. Kick out Talbot. She's been hot all night. Stays hot. 17 for Stephanie Talbot, leading all scorers for Seattle. And I like the no call. Brianna Stewart getting in the lane and maybe trying to draw that charge. Instead, the ball kicked out. Play on. And Talbot hits the deep three. Jefferson out of Harrison. The rainbow from 15. No. Sue comes up with the board, feeds Talbot, kick into the corner, she's wide open, it's Jewel You knew that was going down. 69-60. Well, we said at halftime when Jewel had seven points, she thought, well, she's due to get going, and she has got going early in this one. Timeout, Vicki Johnson. How about the three balls coming from Stephanie Talbot and Jewel Lloyd. Stephanie's been on fire all night long. A perfect four of four from behind the arc. Seattle getting it done from behind the arc. They're now eight of 13 from three point range. Good for 62%. Here's Jewel out of the corner. Hey fans, the Storm app presented by Angel of the Winds Casino Resort, your go-to place for Storm stats, rosters, and standings. Play the interactive Storm Squad player pick'em game and win cool prizes like Storm Autograph swag or a one-night stay at Angel of the Winds Casino Resort. Exit 210 off I-5 in Arlington. Find the Storm app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store by searching Seattle Storm. Big fan of Lee, Lee Woodward with you from Angel of the Winds Arena here in Everett. Storm up by nine. This is their biggest lead of the contest, but it's cut into by Isabel Harrison and one. She'll go to the line. Defensively, it looked like Seattle came out in a 2-3 look. Harrison able to find the hole in between the layers of that zone. Harrison, the teammate of Mercedes Russell at Tennessee, averaging eight points, six rebounds a contest. Off the front iron there. She's got six thus far tonight. Lloyd around a Brianna screen. Cutting baseline, Talbot. Got good position and gets it to go. A night when everything's going in, that rolls in for you. When everything's not going in, that one rolls out, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought Jewel Lloyd might have traveled. She kind of lost control of the ball, but she gets it down. And then Talbot kind of couldn't really secure it either. But it, it ends up in the hoop, That's which right. is what is the most important thing. Tip saved by Brianna Stewart. Seattle off to the races again. Dallas has got four back, though. Talbot back to Stewie. Here's Sue. Oh, bounce pass inside. Well done, bodied. And Seattle will go to the free throw line. Boy, Dallas has really given up good post position tonight. And when Seattle gets the basketball, they're always seeming to be able to get body contact and go to the free throw line. And this is These are free throws number 27 and 28 for Seattle thus far. And they have just thoroughly dominated at the foul line. 21 points at the foul line. Dallas has been there six times. They've only made one. So 21 to one wow. advantage for Seattle at the foul line. Dallas has a slight advantage from three point range. They've made 27 points to Seattle's 24, but from you're right, the free throw line has been the difference in this one. I mean, Dallas has made five more field goals than Seattle, 26 to 21, but that foul line has been very good to Seattle. And the first double digit lead for either team tonight, right now, 72 62. Seattle trying to go to six and one. Here's a three ball on the way up and in Enrique Goombawale. My goodness. So tough. Lloyd with it. Around a pick. Now to Talbot. Sue with it. Here's Russell. Catch and shoot Brianna. That one's a little flat. Had a hand in her face. Goombawale on the push. Working on Russell. 
Kick out, Savali, the lefty, triggers it up short. Great snatch rebound by Brianna. Even better outlet to Jewel Lloyd. Foul it in and one. How about Brianna Stewart? Goes up, gets the rebound, and that was a Sue Bird-esque outlet. Well, I saw Jewel Lloyd streaking, and so did Brianna Stewart. You wondered off that rebound if she would see, and she did. Brianna Stewart just throwing a dime length of the floor to Jewel Lloyd, and Jewel's so smart, waiting for the contact. Didn't want to get her shot blocked from behind, got into the defender, and now has a three-point opportunity. Brianna making Jewel better, and Jewel making Brianna better. They are two of the best players in the world right now. Back up to a 10-point cushion, 75-65. Dupree back into the game for Seattle. Here's Jefferson, kick out, three ball on the way, Gray, no good. And a loose ball file, we will keep it right here, as battling in there was Allery and Stewie. And Stewie got and a chicken winger a little bit and kept her down from getting that rebound. A really good start to the second half for Seattle, extending this lead out to 10, and now Noel Quinn, for Dan Hughes, goes to the bench to bring in Jordan Canada and Candace Dupree. Jefferson pull up, up and in. Jefferson's been quiet tonight, but that was a nice jumper. She's three of six, six points. Stewart has it, gets a pick from Jewel Lloyd. Now Canada, dumping it low. Good post position, Brianna Hangs can't make it. And it's rebounded by Allery. Jefferson behind the back. Sobley now against Brianna. Driving in his gray. Really good by Jewel. In a game that we haven't seen a lot of good one on one defense, that was very good by Jewel, but even better move by Alicia Gray. Yeah, she cut off that left hand. Gray, the natural lefty, but an even better move than the good defense by Gray. You can't leave Candace Dupree wide open from 17. I know she missed that one, but my goodness. Now that is her money shot. <laughs> Average double figures every year of her career. Gumbawale, no. Both teams cooling off a bit in the last couple minutes. Here's Brianna, she'll drive right into the lane. Some contact, but no foul. Jefferson carries the basketball. That's got to be a carry. Now they're going to call a push instead on Jefferson. She knew she couldn't pick the basketball up because she'd already jumped with it in her hands. She was just shielding off Sue from getting the one on zero the other way. Now Sue Bird, the crafty defender, getting out there, causing that turnover, surprising oh. Jefferson right there when she jumped. And then she just kind of clipping her. Super will take a breather, now Jordan Canada taking over that point guard spot. Canada's played seven minutes, two points, couple of rebounds. Has yet to take a field goal. Here's Brianna from three, heel the iron, no. Three right there for a second to try to get it. Allery's late on it. And she hands off to a teammate, here comes Gray. Gray right in on Canada, contact and the foul. And Alicia Gray will go to the free throw line for two shots. That was the correct call there. Jordan Canada still moving, trying to get there to set her feet to take that charge from Gray, but just not there in time. Alicia Gray burst on the scene this year with an opening night. 23 points and nine rebounds in the win over the LA Sparks. And then she was off to team with Katie Lou on the three-on-three -three team, making her first appearance back. And boy, boy, they miss her punch. And Dallas has won both games against LA and hasn't beaten anybody else yet. Well, I think this roster is dramatically different with two starters back in Satu Sabali and Alicia Gray. Mubawale with it. It's double team. 50 Prince and Brianna. Great moving in on Jewel, no call that time. Kind of throws it up. I think she was anticipating the call. This one doesn't go either. Ooh, thought it would be Seattle basketball. They say last touch by Candace Dupree. It will be Dallas possession underneath. 13 on the shot clock, 2.56 on the game clock here in the third. Katie Lou Samuelson in for Brianna Stewart. 
crucial stretch. Three minutes to go here in the third, and no Stewie, no Sue. We'll see where the offense is going to come from. I got a feeling it might come from Katie Lou because she was 0-4 in the first half with three misses from three-point range, and that usually doesn't continue for her. Baseline drive turnover on the end line. And will be Seattle basketball. Eighth turnover to the game for Dallas. Still only four for Seattle. And here Candace Dupree getting over there, trying to shut off baseline, and pushes her right out of bounds. Jewel around a pick from Dupree. Crossover back to the strong hand. A hook pass and a bad one. Fifth turnover on the storm. Four on four the other way. Arike floats it up and in. We've seen a couple of nice floaters tonight from the wings. Yeah, that was high level of difficulty, making it look easy. The defenders all waiting for her. She didn't want to pick up a charge and just floats it over the top. We got a whistle. She sees Katie Lou standing there. Doesn't want to draw that charge. What a smart read in transition, the body control and the soft touch to get that one to go. Well, we've seen her score in so many different ways just in one game tonight. She's got 20 points on 8 of 12. Samuelson kicks it over to Prince. She'll drive in. She's got Katie Lou in the corner. Instead, she'll force one up. No good. Katie Lou over the back to tip it out of bounds. It'll be Dallas basketball. Seattle holding on to a three-point lead, which is what they had at halftime. It's a 7-0 run for Dallas after Seattle led by a season or by a game high 10. Just they can't dispatch of this pesky Dallas team. Well, there's so many lead changes and ties in the first matchup yeah. that went to overtime, 197, and we are on the same type of pace. Yes, we are. 14 ties, nine lead changes in the last time they met. That's amazing. Seattle gets it back on the turnover. Well, Seattle's offense has been in a drought recently. They need to get something going here. Good possession with a high percentage shot. Here's Samuelson catch and shoot off the front iron. Well, they got Sue, Talbot, and Brianna on the bench. Those three have put up 39 points together tonight as Alicia Gray goes right into the left side and scores. It's a one-point game with 90 seconds to play. Jewel in the corner. Now Epiphany Prince tests her eye to three. No. Mallory the rebound. Sabley gives off to Gray. Step back from 19. Short arm. Here comes Jordan on the push. She's got Jewel to her right. She's going to take it all the way in. Pump fake. Just kind of threw one up there against the long arms. And Sabley out and running the other way and will lay it up and in. And Dallas has the lead again. First time they have led this half. Four-point swing. Canada looking for the foul. Didn't get the call. And the flyer for Dallas, Satu Sabali, just beating everybody for the land. 11-0 run for the Dallas Wings right now. Gives them the lead at 76 to 75. Hey, fans, let's see who's draining buckets tonight. Presented by Craftsman Plumbing. Craftsman Plumbing serving the greater Seattle area for all your plumbing needs. Head over to craftsman-plumbing.com. And it's been Stephanie Talbot largely tonight draining buckets. Yeah, she's played really well. One of her best games of the season. Four for four from deep and seven of ten overall for those 19 points. And you know, she was a player that was invited into training camp and didn't know if she was going to make the roster. And now with some of the players in and out of the lineup, she's done a nice job in the starting lineup. And it's hard to take somebody out. Katie Lou Samuelson started the first two games before departing for that three-on-three -three opportunity. But, boy, it's really hard in a competitive league, especially now Katie Lou Samuelson's back. But Stephanie Talbot said, I'm not giving up my job that easily. 19 points today in 18 minutes. And she's got some really nice opportunities in transition, really, just getting to her spot deep in the three-point line and, and a couple of hard takes to the hoop. Dallas bench has brought them back here. 22-11, the Dallas bench leads the Seattle bench in this game, and it's an 11-0 run right now, and it's players like Sabley and Gray that are doing it. They got 17. Well, the Seattle has gotten a little sloppy offensively and some quick shots. 
And those quick shots, especially from three, when you miss them, it's a long rebound and it leads to transition opportunities. And Seattle had dominated in that fast break opportunity, but Dallas is catching up. Dupree loses handle to good defense by Allery. Oh, they're going to get Allery on the hold. Stay here. Now, here's what happened. Allery played really good defense, stopped the drive, and got the ball free. But then I think she just kept holding on to Candace Dupree when the ball was already loose. Allery not happy about this, but you see Candace Dupree trying to take Ooh, her. Oh, it might have been Dupree that hooked her. Yep. I that, think was, that, one is that was a veteran one that move. Seattle got away with on that one. That was veteran, one of the all-time leading scorers in the WNBA against a youngster. And Candace won that battle, at least in the eyes of the official. See if Seattle can capitalize and get the lead back after getting a gift call. And there's a whistle the other way. This one's on Dupree. May have been a makeup call. Happens a lot, though, doesn't it? Where you just get de loose ball fouls right after you get a questionable foul one way. Yeah, there's no question. I don't know <laughs> if the officials saw that other play on the replay board, but regardless, it's Dallas basketball and a chance to extend their lead and an 11-0 run for the Wings. And Seattle's offense has just gone ice cold. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. This one apparently is going to go down to the wire just like the last one did. Agumba Wally gets her shot blocked. Saved by Epiphany Prince in the corner. No, couldn't get to it, but it'll still be Seattle basketball. And they can take it all the way down if they wish. There's basically two tenths of a second separating game and shot clock. Drew Lloyd is leading scorer on the floor right now. It over 19 points per game. Get the ball in her hands. Lloyd, a screen from Samuelson. And an illegal screen from Samuelson. So far, been a rough night for Katie Lou in her first appearance back after her Olympic qualifying break, 0-5. What was that? Yeah, that's just an incorrect call. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, just a, so she really didn't make any contact, and if she did, she was set. So that's a tough one. Three seconds left. Sabali got to make something happen. Does not even know how much time is left. And that was kind of a sloppy end to what was a sloppy third quarter for the Seattle Storm as Dallas's bench gets them back in it. They were down 10. Not any longer, they're up one, 76, 75, back for the final 10 after this. Storm Basketball, presented by Swedish, the official medical care team of the Seattle Storm. Help for good. Supported in part by Carter Subaru, safety focused, community connected. In Shoreline, Ballard, and 24 seven at cartersubaru.com and by BECU, the official credit union of the Seattle Storm. Well, Lee, Seattle 0 of 8 with four turnovers in the final five minutes of the third quarter. They shoot only 6 of 15 in the quarter, and Dallas outscores them 11-0 over the final 5-13. Here's Jewel trying to erase that. She says, take your 11-0 run and throw it away. Now that's tough three, just coming off the screen. And Great steal here. Here's Jordan Canada going to coast in and score. And it's a quick 5-0 run getting Seattle up four. Could not have started any better for Noel Quinn here in the first 30 seconds. It was like they needed that timeout for the quarter break, and now they have a renewed sense of energy. Mabry up and in. And still really with the same five or a similar five as he's now in, but still no Brianna, still no Sue. Hook pass. Kate Lou's got to make one tonight, right? Oh, back iron. And here's Canada dumping it inside. Izzy keeps it high and scores 82-78. Now the energy's back on the building, and you're right, I think energy's a good word because 
The building didn't have any energy the last 10 minutes or so. Seattle didn't have much energy. And now it's coming back. Tiffany oh Prince was arguing gracious. with the official and loses the basketball. Wow. That is the only reason she coughed it up is because she was turning around and look at the official. Well, it's getting chippy out there. There's been a little extra contact between a few of the players, and you can tell Tiffany didn't like what happened, but loses the ball. Jewel with it against Sabley. Good matchup for Seattle. Step back three by Jewel. In and out, rattles off. That was deep in the well. With it, Sabley against Katie Lou. Way to stay in front, but a nice move there. Offhand by Sabley, too. We got a tie ball game at 82 82. Eighth tie of the game. We've had 11 lead changes. We had 14 ties and nine lead changes the first time these two teams played. Canada uses her body magnificently and floats it up with a right hand. Goomba Wally coming the other way. That's all ball by Prince, but it will be Dallas basketball. You're right, both teams are getting chippy. Now you got a Goomba Wally talking to the official. So this was the play right here. The defense, here's Epiphany. Oh, yeah, you see a Goomba Wale grab at her foot. She grabbed Epiphany Prince's foot, and then the ball comes loose. No oh. wonder Epiphany was so mad. <laughs> she didn't lose her balance, but I think she lost her cool a little bit. If she had lost her balance, maybe, uh, if maybe the foul would have been called. If she would have lost her balance, the foul would have been called. You're right. I, I was expecting the whistle because I saw her. I right. didn't realize that it was her hand that reached out to grab. Mabry only her second miss from three-point range today. Here's Prince with it. Now to Sue. Inside Brianna. The Stars are back in the game for Seattle. Sue to Stewart. The bucket. 86-82. 7-15 left. Noel Quinn able to get some rest for Brianna Stewart. Seattle still with a two-possession lead, despite Stewie having that long stretch to catch her breath. Over the top to Gray. We thought this might be the first team to 100 wins. It might indeed be like that. Jefferson tries to save, nearly does. Good job by Brianna tapping it to Sue. Four on two the other way. Good no look pass to Brianna, laying up with the right hand and in. Seattle back up six. That was so beautiful, the timing. Sue knew exactly when to get that ball to Stewie, and so she could get a wide open look at the bucket. Vicky Johnson timeout. Now it's rocking. We got more fans in here than we've had all year long. They start to slowly open the attendance up. These Storm fans want to see their champions play. And this was some championship basketball. The Hall of Famer to the player of the month. Touched me in, in a way that I, I didn't know it would. Simone Augustus, one of the smoothest offensive players. Augustus has another one. It's beautiful to watch. Minnesota has the rebound. Here's Simone in transition. Giant step to the rack with the right wing. Louis, no! Louis, no! Look at that hat. Are you kidding me? Augustus hits it and is fouled. Like, the fans were always amazing. They know they always have a place in my heart. I gave them everything in 14 years that I could give. And I felt that in return. The leadership she brings, but also a light personality. The Storm stay home to take on the Dallas Wings, June 6, 4 o'clock. That's Sunday afternoon. Catch the action right here on Joe TV. Single game tickets now on sale for all June home games. Visit stormbasketball.com. Secure your seats to see this future Hall of Famer who has matched a season high with eight assists. Eight assists for Sue Bird, and it's just doing what she does. This is just <laughs> absolutely perfect. On the break, waits until Stewie just gets ready to take off, and she glides to the hoop. But Sue Bird, one turnover, eight assists. Seattle's assisted on 24 of 28 made baskets. Nice job by Ezzy. Grabs that basketball, makes sure she secures it, and gets away from traffic and is foul. 
Yeah, seven points for Ezzy in this one, and you like that just aggressive rip of the board, not allowing anybody to come and poke it away. Her length there bothering Satu Sabali's shot, and then sometimes young to grab it. Yeah, you know, sometimes young players just don't have that extra chip. You got to have a little chip to be able to do that, and that was really impressive, I thought, by Ezzy. Here's Brianna, steps into a three in rhythm. No. Ooh, jeez. And big contact there. And Ezzy lands right on her back. But tough as nails just gets right back up again. I mean, she's 19 years old, right? Whoa. It's like she's she's got energy. She's young. She'll pop Ooh. right back up. But and it I wasn't think looking the... at that in slow-mo, I would think she was able to kind of cushion that blow a little bit. I thought at first that she had drilled her head, which that's the one you worry about, is that you hit the noggin on the hardwood and you got all kinds of issues, but she looks like she is doing just fine after that uh, mm. hit to the deck. That's like a wind knockout blow right there. Here's Brianna Stewart, catch fire, no. Stewie from three-point range, one of six on the night. Seattle letting Dallas hang around. Yep. And they're such a good three-point shooting team. They've already made 10. And you look up, that's just two quick shots made to tie this up. Here's a good matchup. Great offensive player, great defender. And Jordan wins the battle. And brings it up. Good screen by Brianna. Jordan all the way into the paint. Back out Prince. Prince drives in. The one-two, leaves it up soft, can't get it to go. Canada tries to get the basketball and does. Tips it to a teammate. Seattle's got a new 14. Canada to Brianna. Extra touch pass. That's how champions do it. She could have taken the shot, but instead, no. I've got a teammate coasting in wide open. And the decision was so quick. She was in the air, ready to pull the trigger. Would have been a tough shot, but she saw Ezzy wide open. Allery against Stewart. That's a mismatch in favor of Seattle, and it's going to be Storm basketball. Watch this again. So. Canada kicks it up. Look at that. Goes in the air, draws the defense, and the good cut off the ball by Ezzy Magmagor. And you can see she popped right off after, right up after taking that big hit. And she's all good. And the bucket feels nice. And she's got nine points, which is her second highest scoring output of the season. In just nine minutes of action, too. She has been a factor tonight. Bird with it. Back to Canada. Wiggles her way in, lobs it over the top to no one. It's intended for Russell. Inside five to play, an eight-point game. Seattle's biggest lead's ten, so they're marching it back up towards double figures again. See if they can get a stop here. And mismatch down low. Double team on a Goomba Wallet. Crossover dribble into a whole lot of traffic. Kick ball on Seattle. Reset it to 14 with 429. Dallas missed the mismatch they yep. had. Allery down low, and Jordan Canada had switched out onto her. He couldn't find her. Sue gets a hand on the entry pass. Ty Harris into the game. Sadly, working on Brianna in and out. The long arms of Mercedes Russell gets it out to Sue. Now Jewel, touch pass. Brianna inside, some contact, and she finishes. the storm with a 10-point lead. 30th field goal, 26 assists. Timeout by Vicki Johnson as her team was trapped in the corner over there. 3.58 left to go. Seattle a 10-point lead, which matches the biggest of the game. And Seattle's gotten some energy, gotten out and run, and just the unselfishness of this basketball team. At least it's contagious. Well, anytime you have Sue Bird ball in her hands looking up, and then Jewel Lloyd, top 10 in the league in assists, and she sees Stewie at 6'4", but the reach, the wingspan of over seven feet, and she just rises over the top of the 6'4", Sabali. And then this is a beautiful, unselfish pass from Stewie. She was in the air, and she could have got that shot off, but instead zips it over to Ezzy, makes the right read. This team is so good at scoring, but they're also the combination of the ability and the willingness to pass. 
there are a lot of really good basketball teams where the players want to get theirs and want to put up their numbers. Yep. And that is, those three right there, they are so unselfish with each other. And you see why they're the defending world champs, because they just want to win. Whoever puts up numbers in the book, as long as they put up one more point than their opponent, they're happy. They have nearly completely erased the 11-0 run that Dallas put on them to close the third quarter. They are on a 10-0 until that shot, a 10-0 run themselves from the 8-0-3 mark in the fourth quarter. And that was a big shot coming out of the timeout. Yeah, the defense kind of took the shot fake from Sabali and she drilled it. Bounce pass intended for Stewie and it's turned over. Here comes a Goomba Wale. She is so quick. Seems like every time Seattle reaches that 10 point mark, they cough up the lead again. Goomba Wale comes in with some crazy dribbling and gets all the way to the rim and misses the shot. Sue with it. Feeds Jewel. Nobody's on her. She's going to coast in. Mabry way too late picking up 24 there. And that was all created by Sue Bird again. Seeing that gap in the defense and firing it through to the cutting Lloyd. Sabley with it. And looked like a block, but they're going to. Call the foul on Brianna again. Look at this vision from Subert. Eyes up, sees Jewel, and you see her just hesitate enough to get it through the two lines of that defense. And Jewel Lloyd cutting to the open spot. And that's so easy for Jewel Lloyd. Once she gets on the run with her right hand, unstoppable in Seattle, has pushed this lead to nine. Hey, fans, get the freshest Storm gear featuring the new logo at the official team shop of the Seattle Storm. Visit the Storm team shop online today to find jerseys for every player, official practice gear, new Wilson basketballs, and more. SeattleStormTeamShop.com. And that new logo is hot. Dick Fain, Elise Woodward with you. Seattle hot right now, outscoring the Wings in the fourth quarter, 19-9 to to get this lead back up to Nine points at 94 to 85. And the 27 assists, Elise, by Seattle is second most by any team in the WNBA this season. The league high is 29 by Connecticut versus Indiana. And if Seattle gets two more assists, that should be enough to win this game. Now playing really well, moving the basketball super with nine of them, and then Jewel and Stewie both with five assists apiece. Lloyd screened by Brianna, hesitates, now explodes, runner, no, back iron. Snatched down by Harrison. Three on two the other way, Mabry, oh, nice pass inside of Goomba Wale, no, tipped around, and Russell has it. Very good defense in the open floor by Jordan Kenna. Did not foul a Goomba Wale and did not allow her to get a shot off going with her right hand. Canada thinks about the entry pass. Now we'll give it up to Brianna. The double team comes. Is it big on small inside there? Touch pass, Brianna in the corner. Dagger, no. A little bit rushed there by Brianna Stewart. Yeah, trying to get her footing behind that three point line. It just wasn't quite on balance. Sable is a big three right here. That's off the back iron, but an offensive rebound, Harrison. Ball on ball right there. And Isabel Harrison scores on her former college teammate. With the three-point shot, a two-possession game right now. Seattle needs to find the good spacing and get a good look here. This is usually when Sue hits the big three. That one's off the mark, and here comes Palace the other way as Jewel just kind of falls over like a tree in the forest. Alicia Gray drawing contact. Ooh, that would have been big with the and one, but instead it goes out, but they can cut it to four here at the free throw line. But boy, oh boy, if that was an and one, it would have been a one possession game potentially. Dallas running it right back. This will come down to execution for Seattle. Still anybody's game. It was just the reverse last time against Dallas. With Dallas holding that six, seven point lead with a minute 30 left. They still had a four point lead with 17 seconds left and somehow, Seattle forced overtime and got the W. 11-0 run by Connecticut at the end of the third, then a 10-0 run by Seattle to start the fourth. 
And now we're back to a four-point game. Sue, pump fakes the three. Driving baseline. Tries to feed a pass over to Canada, I believe it was intended for. Three on three the other way. And Mabry's been quiet all half, but scores here. Two-point game. Letting the young wings stick around. Dangerous, dangerous thing to do. This is the youngest team in the WNBA. They have no players older than 28 years of age. So you'd think you'd have the advantage in close games like this. But right now, it's Dallas with the momentum. You know, Sue Bird in the last possession took off baseline after the shot fake, but then got in the air and the window slammed shut on an open opponent or an open teammate. And Dallas able to get out and run on the turnover in Seattle's offense. This has been a game of runs where Seattle got out to 11 and then Dallas crawled back to tie it. And then Seattle went out by 10 and now Dallas is within two. Oh, this is a big possession. Yes. And Noel Quinn sliding over and taking over for Dan Hughes in that chair. And she's been the one that has been very active offensively in designing plays. And she said, hey, look, I'm ready. Dan Hughes, when he had to step away before his cancer treatment and last year in the Wubble, when he stepped away, he couldn't be there. I had to take on a lot of responsibility, and he really helped me. We'll see what she draws up here out of the timeout. 10-2 Dallas run right now to get to within two. Here's Sue with it. Jewel Lloyd, now to Russell, and we got a whistle foul outside, but that's only going to be three team fouls on Dallas. It feels like, I mean, not only would it give you a two possession lead, this would be a deflating bucket for Seattle if they were to get it here. This for, young for wing, yes, for if the wings playing hard on the road, down two, but if they give up a bucket here, you just kind of can feel the air just kind of come out of their sails, you would think. Canada with it. Had a player open inside. The one-two step through, no. Snatch down Harrison. That is not the shot you want. Agumba Wally inside Alicia Gray, and we're tied. My goodness. This is the exact opposite of what happened in Dallas, where Seattle came from nowhere to steal a win, and Dallas right now has come from nowhere to tie this up. Here's Sue with it. Can the superstars get it done? Oh, give and go. Yes, they can. Brianna to Jewel. Back to the player of the month. There's the bucket. 19 seconds left. Timeout, Dallas. A high percentage look off another assist. It is what they have done well in this game. 28 helpers by Seattle. Brianna Stewart, give, go. They have done that to perfection. And why it works is Brianna normally goes over to set that screen on Jewel Lloyd, and the defense has to get in position to take away the angle on the screen. And when they do that, Brianna Stewart just curls and goes right to the hoop, and she's smart enough to know when the timing is right. I mentioned with about three minutes left that the WNBA high for assists in the game this year was 29. I thought you needed to get two more, and you would have it. Well, they've only got one. That was it. And I still think you might need to get one more to make sure you have this game. Well, you see she curls right to the hoop, and there is nothing that Alicia Gray can do in the weak side. Defense is spaced out. But now it's going to come down to a stop. You lead by two. And so there's all kinds of options for Dallas. Normally, the old adage is on the road, you go for a win. At home, you play for the tie. Well, let's see. There has been. 11 made three-point shots for Dallas and some more three-point opportunities. And how in the world Alicia Gray goes on the court? They had six players on the court, and she just ran off. There was some serious confusion well, right. with Seattle. And, and here's the thing is, like, Noel Quinn is then yelling about matchups of who's supposed to take who. Right. How are you going to know to match up with there's when there's six, six players on the court? <laughs> Fair point. Seattle by two, 13 seconds left. Here's Jefferson with it. Savoli now with Brianna on her. She fires from three and knocks it down. Timeout, Noel Quinn. How about Satu Savoli giving Dallas the lead with 6.9 left? Wow. She is six foot four, pump fake Stewie. And instead of going into her to draw the contact ahead of the foul line, you thought here she might go into her. Right. Instead, she just leans back and the natural right-handed player shoots with her left from deep. You see her take off to the hoop, 
She does a lot of things right-handed, but she is pure as they come from her left hand and struggled as a rookie from deep after having a phenomenal career at Oregon. And that might be the biggest shot so far of her WNBA career. A Ooh, huge good. one for the second year player. What else is huge is that foot on the line. They're taking a look at it right now. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot closer than the one they reviewed earlier with Jewel Lloyd shooting a three, who was a good two inches behind the line. Well, that would be a massive oh, call huge. because it looks like it might, her foot, hopefully we can get a replay. Because that would mean it's a tie game and the pressure is off as a shooter and yes. as a team. When you are looking at a deficit, and if I miss, my team loses, it's a different mentality. I mean, I think that... It's very close. Now, I will, I'll tell you this. I believe if it was called a two originally, I think they would keep it a two. But since you need irrefutable evidence to show whether it was a three or not, I don't know if they have it to overturn it. But they are reviewing it right now. You think that was the intended shot out of the timeout? Um, it sure looked like it. She had no hesitation, yeah. and she looked to get Stewie in the air, and she did. Here's another look at it. Look how close that left foot is. And, of course, just to remind all of our viewers, it's where your feet start. It's not where they finish. Right. So she can hop all the way into the bucket if she wants as long as she takes off behind the three-point line. And that is close. That left foot snuggled all the way up. Are you with me that if it was called a two, it probably would be kept a two? I haven't really had a definitive look, so we saw the one. We can one. get one more look on it. Very, very close call. I mean, it one more. It is very close. It is a two-point basket. Wow, they did change it. And I think you can see the tip of her sneaker on that line. Here we go. Seattle trying to get the win. Lob pass inside. Brianna Stewart, shot blocked. Three seconds left. Knocked away by Talbot for the win. Throws it up. No, and Talbot had time. She didn't know it. It was a scramble. She didn't know she had time. But Talbot had time to gather, even dribble, and shoot the ball. But instead, she flung it up to try to beat the clock. And we will go to overtime for a third time this season and a second time against this Dallas Wings team. And at least it was exactly the opposite last week. It was Seattle, the team, with the big three. This time, it's Sabali with the big three. Going to OT. Coming up. With 3.11 left in regulation, Seattle had a 94-85 lead. And Dallas... Runs it, 9-0 run on Seattle. And we finish at 96-96 going into extra time for the third time for Seattle and the second time against the Dallas Wings. Here's Savoli who hit the big shot moments ago. No, snatched down by Russell. Let's see if Seattle can put the hammer down here in the first minute. A couple of buckets and a stop. The overtime game the other day it was an 8-0 run to start things. Back-to-back -back Sue Bird threes. Overtime is when Sue shines. Here's Jewel. Nice feed to Russell. Lays it up and in. Good start for the storm. Mabry had 16 points in the first half, six in the second half. A Seattle has done a better job getting out to her and taking up some of that open space. Wale offensive foul on Savali. Let's take a speak of fouls. Did Seattle not get the benefit of a foul call? Well, this was the last possession of the game. The play drawn up for Stewie. She's underneath. Nah. Was there contact on the arm? Eh, I don't think in that situation you're going to decide a game on that. That's just my personal opinion. And we play on. And Seattle with a two-point lead in the ball. Here's Jewel with it. Splits the defense, throws it away. Jules trying to track her down. Alicia Grant coasts into the lane, lays it up and in. We're tied again. Good hands. Seattle's been turning it over in the third and fourth quarter. They had just four. Midway through the third, they had four. They now have 13 turnovers. Ooh, man, had great post position. Sue didn't have the right angle to get it to her. Here's Jewel with it. Six on the shot clock. Gets it knocked out of her hands. 
Who with it? Gonna have to put it up with two. Fading and missing. Avery has it. She can hit these. This one's long, though. Heel of the iron. Good rebound. Snaps oh, down, and a turnover. Yeah. Great job by Enrique Agumbawale. She was paying, pe playing peekaboo right there. And it, I think Mercedes made the right decision, because if she would have let that go, it would have been a bucket. Yeah. And Agumbawale, you got to tip your hat. She read that beautifully in the backcourt. Read the eyes of Mercedes, who had a great board, and then just kind of got two of a rhythm. She just thought it was going to be an easy outlet pass, and it wasn't. Avery crossover, get all the way into the lane and scoring, and Dallas has the lead again with 2.50 left. And to bring it up. Now Sue will set up. Double high pick and roll with Russell and Brianna Stewart. Looking for the lob inside Stewie, can't get it to her. Here's Talbot. Talbot steps in, fires and hits. It's been Stephanie Talbot's night. Eight of 12, 21 points for Stephanie Talbot. And three Storm players over 20 now. Stewie, Jewel, and Talbot. Oh, the extra pass to Gray. Russell had to run a long way out there. Sadly, gets knocked down, and it's going to be a foul on Talbot. Russell had to get out and rotate to the corner, and when she comes flying at a shooter, they're wondering, all right, who's going to be down there to grab that defensive board? She's been so solid, and with her all the way out extended, Talbot gets called for the foul underneath on Sobley. Noel Quinn, her first overtime game as the head coach of the Seattle Storm. Avery double team. Out of Gray against Talbot. Coast in, lays it up again. Boy, that first step from Gray is quick. And she's a lefty, and it just, if you're not really focused on that, your natural inclination is not to shadow over on that left hand. And a traveling violation gives it back. 151 left. Well, this crowd has been able to be opened up a little bit. You can feel the nervous energy in here. It's been much louder tonight. It's been palpable, the energy, but right now you can tell that these fans are nervous yeah. down two. Need a stop here. Don't want to go down double digits inside 90 seconds. Here comes the high pick from Harrison. Mabry with it. The double team there. Mabry lets it go. Thought Talbot might pick that, but it gets into Harrison. Puts it up the left hand. No, offensive rebound, Savile. Working on Stewie. Savile drives in, throws it away. Three on one the other way. Second defender comes back in gray. Here comes Jewel. Splits the defense, lays it up strong. Ooh, offensive foul. Wow. The defense by Alicia Gray, says the official. Let's take a look. So who initiates the contact? Are the feet set right here? Pretty good. I don't have too much of a problem with that. And it's a very big turn of events. Seattle with Jewel Lloyd, three on two situation. You think, oh, this will be tied up pretty easily. That's a high percentage opportunity instead. It's a turnover, and Dallas has the ball and the lead. Mowale. Against Jewel, three on the shot clock. Gets to the window, misses the shot. Get that rebound, and they do. Four long arms in there. Two of Stewie, two of Russell. Seattle trying to tie or take the lead on this possession. Here's Lloyd driving baseline. She's got the step. She lays it up and in. We're tied. Timeout on the floor. 102, 102. Jewel Lloyd. With 22, 7 of 10 from the field, with the biggest two of the night for Seattle. Great hands by Gray, and then this is as easy as they come for the lefty. So athletic, doing that since her days at South Carolina. And then Mabry getting that straight line drive. Talbot coming in, playing her first minutes in a while. Gets it to go, but then Gray right back again. Gray is feeling red hot, feeling great after winning the three-on-three. 
championship with Team USA qualifying for the Olympics. And of course, this game part of that Commissioner's Cup. Seattle undefeated at 4-0, Dallas 2-2. Two two. So this is a huge game for Dallas if they want to try to play for that Commissioner's Cup. They need wins and they need Seattle <laughs> to get some in the, in the loss department. Indeed, the league focus on innovation, the Commissioner's Cup, you got conference rivalries, you got bragging rights, and of course the prize pool of a half million dollars all be at stake with the WNBA Commissioner's Cup. It's gonna be played on Thursday, August 12th at Phoenix Suns Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. It's gonna be the best Commissioner's Cup record from the West, which right now belongs to the 4-0 Seattle Storm against the best Commissioner's Cup record from the East. So Seattle trying to not only avoid their second overall loss of the season, they're trying to avoid their first Commissioner's Cup loss of the season. Seattle shooting 49%, 35 of 71, 9 of 25 from three-point range, and 23 of 29 from the free throw line, 73%. Their most important number, though, their assist to field goal ratio, 30 assists for 35 made field goals, most assists in the WNBA all season long tonight by Seattle. Here's a Goomba Wallace. Seattle needs to stop inside 30 to play. Canada gets back on D, kicks back to Savoy. Five on the shot clock, the big one too, lays it up, no good. Offensive rebound, Harrison, and we got a loose ball foul on the ground. Stay here. This, in terms of the clock, now just 2.7 yeah. seconds left. So Dallas can essentially take this down where Seattle would only have a couple of ticks left to either go for a tie game or the winner. 22nd timeout. Seattle with some turnovers in this overtime. Four turnovers, as a matter of fact, in the last six possessions. So coughing it up, giving Dallas more opportunities. Even though Seattle scored first, 102-102 right now. Well, so for Seattle. Ooh, wow, that was a lot of contact there by Harrison coming in. I mean, it was a, it was a cross check, and then she had Russell's arm in that rebound. This has been a very physical game it underneath. Has. On both sides. So if I'm Dallas, Vicki Johnson, also another one of Dan Hughes, former assistant coaches, the head coach for Dallas. All three former players in the WNBA who are now head coaches, Sandy Brondello, the other one, all have been assistant coaches under Dan Hughes, which is great. But let's see what they do defense or offensively here, Dallas. What Vicky wants. They're going to take this down to the last tick. UConn on UConn. Here's Jefferson against Sue Bird. Three on the shot clock with two. Jefferson, four on the game clock. Sue does a nice job defensively and a timeout. Says .5 left. We'll see if they get any more of that. As you see the coaching staff, Ryan Webb's on the floor right now indicating give us some clock, give us some clock. I think it may have ticked down a good half a second or I, I so. Saw, I thought it was one point. Oh, 1.1. 1. 1. And it's when the timeout is granted. So we'll take a look. How about the D by Sue there? You can't tell when the official in the corner actually grants it. Good D so by Sue. Here and there, one, I thought 1.2. Possibly 1.3. Yeah, they should they should definitely get something more back than they have right now. So what do you do? What do you do? Let's say you do have catch and shoot opportunity. I, I think there's no doubt in my mind that the player that you really cannot affect her shot very easily because of her length. You run a screen action or some kind of action for Stewie, and you love it going to the rim so that she can catch. And the closer she can get to the rim, the higher the percentage shot usually. Usually, But there's a big difference between 0.5 and 1.0 or 1.1. Yes, and 0.5 is catch and shoot. Catch and shoot and really not even set yourself. It's just get it in your hands. With a second, you can catch it. You can 
you can caress it a little bit, make it feel good in your hands and let it go. And I think the real key here is going to be the screen or the cut to get Stewie open. What kind of action will they go to? And right now it looks like they're gonna probably run Jewel off and maybe it's a back pick. You see Tiffany Bird there talking to the clock operators. 0.5 seconds isn't a big deal until there's 0.5 left in overtime. They're really leaving it They're at 0.5? They're going to leave it out there. Wow. So this is going to have to be a quick catch and shoot. Maybe something dive into the hole by Brianna. We'll see. And there she is. Oh, she had it. Catch and shoot for Lloyd! Who hits it at the buzzer? Brianna Stewart was diving into the hole and was wide open, but Jewel Lloyd hits it anyway. And Seattle wins it. 105, 102. What an exclamation point to a stellar game by Jewel Lloyd. 25 points to lead all scores, and that's big time. And she has gotten better and better each and every year, and that game winner was absolutely pure. She threw it up about 30 feet in the air, and it dropped down in the bucket and i will tell you they're reviewing him and i let me promise you there is no question this game is over that was out of her hand with 0.3 left they are reviewing it but i guarantee you it was out of her hands i'll tell you the other day you saw Lacey clarendon thought it was a winner and didn't get it I sure hope it's not the same thing and jewel lloyd points up as soon as she lets this go Look at this, it's out, it is out, it is out, and this and there game should have been one point over. second on the clock anyway. Like, yes. he, there's no way, and she lets that out. It's, it's almost halfway to the bucket. Look at how high this goes. It goes off of the screen. Like, she talked today, we were able to interview her before the game, and talked about how, hey, man, when you're on the playground, you got to play defense and you get off the court. When you're on the playground, you got to make shots like that to stay on the court. <laughs> and that is just a feel. And winner, sure. you say, there we go. And the thing Winners was, move on, let's go. Brianna sets the screen going to the hoop, and there it is. It is all over. Seattle goes to 7 and 1, goes to 5 and 0 in the Commissioner's Cup, and is 2 and 0 against the Dallas Wings on the season. Who wants a third game against these two? I do, and we're going to get it on Sunday as Jewel Lloyd is the hero tonight. She finishes with 25 points on 8 of 11 and the biggest shot of the season right there in the heart. And Everett is going crazy.